thank you. Um, it's 630, I'm opening it up. Welcome to the Wareham Conservation Commission meeting of Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021. As um, Mr. Pichette mentioned, we have two hearings that will be asked to be continued. So if anybody's on the line for Samuel Mello or Borrego Solar Systems, they will not be heard tonight, but they will be continued to our next meeting of? Uh, March 17th. Thank you. Okay, we have on the line Kwame, Michael, Mary, Elissa, and Sandy. Did I miss anybody? I guess we got it. So, all right, let's start with Guy Campina. All right, we have a notice of public hearing. Pursuant to the provisions of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Wareham Wetland Protected Bylaw Division 6, a public hearing will be held on Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. on the request for determination of applicability for Guy Campana, care of GHD Inc., 1545 INO Road, Hyannis, Mass. Two Is the there anybody here represent? Sorry, I jumped the gun, continue. <laughs> to install a bypass connection at the Narrows pumping station, located on Assessor's Map 47, Lot 1161, 1 Merchant's Way, Wareham, Massachusetts. Thank you. Is there anybody here representing this project? Hi, good evening. Uh, Russ Kleekamp, oh. engineer with GHD, uh, here on behalf of the Wareham WPCF. Thank you. That's the Wareham Water Pollution Control Facility. Um, before Mr. Fischette starts, I'll make a statement that I am a sewer commissioner. And um, I have no financial interest in this particular project. I just want to make it known that um, this is being done for our sewer projects and that I'm associated with sewer commissioners. So, Mr. Pichette, your turn. Okay. Um, this project site is at the Narrows Pump Station at um, the edge of Merchants Way. And the project involves the installation of a bypass connection at this sewer pump station to create a connection point for sewer trucks to hook up to in the event of power or equipment failures at these at this pump station. Um, this is part of an effort to um, address flood resiliency. Um, trench work would be done to install underground piping at this location. Um, the trench work would take place within the paved area adjacent to the pump station, um, as indicated by um, these black lines right here where the new features will be installed. Um, there's going to be an above ground access pipe, um, which would be visible to connect to uh, for, the, for the bypass. Uh, this work would be within the coastal flood zone, uh, within riverfront area and in the buffer zone to a coastal bank. Um, the project also will involve dewatering as the trench work will need to be um, approximately seven to eight feet below the pavement. Um, a containment area is proposed to be set up with um, overflow directed to a nearby catch basin. Um, all work would be done within the existing paved area and adjacent area between the, the pavement and the pump station building. So um, I would recommend the approval of this project with a negative determination number two and the condition for the dewatering containment. Thank you. Russ, anything to add? Um, I, I believe uh, Mr. Pichette was very thorough in his explanation. I'll just add that um, there will be no increase in impervious surface. All the work will be performed underneath the existing asphalt. Um, the only visible structures at the end of construction will be a 12 inch diameter flanged pipe um, that will be sticking up above grade roughly six or eight inches. Uh, best way, just picture like a, an upside down Home Depot bucket, you know, a five gallon bucket. Um, that's about the, the footprint that this pipe will take. It's a larger flanged fitting um, and that will allow pumps in the future if they ever have to close the pump station down for rehabilitation uh, that would be a larger pipe connection for uh, bypass pumps to be installed so we can continue sewer service um, we did a few of these uh, cleanouts um, 
I think uh, one or two years ago, um, it would follow the same procedures and protocols as the, the previous uh, bypasses that we put in. Thank you. Thank you. Questions on the board? I'll start with Kwame. Uh, none, thank you. Michael. I'm uh, good, thank you. Mary. No question. Elisa. Just have one quick question, I'm sure. This is fenced off, so this pipe that stands up won't be attractive to people who have nothing else better to do. Well, uh, very good question. Thank you. The, the pipe itself, um, and Dave, I don't know if you can scroll down in the plan, uh, maybe show the detail on the right-hand side. No, nope. on, the, on the site plan, the one that you had up. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's kind of in the corner there. Yep. If you, so if you look on the, the detail, a pig launch detail now, uh, for those of you who don't know what the terminology means, a, a pig is what's referred to. It's a, a, a like a ball that's used to clean uh, the pipeline. It's uh, gotten the nickname pig over the years, which is, is stuck to it. It's a very technical engineering term. Um, so all you'll be seeing above grade is this uh, about eight inches above grade, a 12 inch diameter cap with a bolted on flange cover. It's uh, uh, Passer buyers would not be able to open this uh, whatsoever. Um, it takes uh, very, you know, the specialty tools to open this. So, and it will be about one foot off the, the pump station. Um, so it'll be very close to the pump station itself. Thank you. Yep. Uh, no chance of being run over. Uh, it's a, a vehicle would have to crash into the pump station. So it's, uh, <laughs> it, it, and it's actually within the, there's like a curb and a walkway at the pump station. Um, it's within that curb line. So it's not on uh, the, the asphalt. It's virtually about a foot off the uh, physical building itself. Okay. Thank you. Is there anybody in the line that would like to speak to this project? If I move that we close the, the uh, discussion. Uh, I have a motion to close the hearing. Second. I have a second. All in favor, Kwame? Yes. Michael? Yes. Mary? Yes. Elissa? Yes. Sandy? Yes, the hearing is closed. Thank you very much. Have a have a great evening. Well, wait a second. We haven't voted. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I I, I uh, move that we accept this determination of applicability and with no. Nope. No. It's an RDA negative two. Okay. Okay. I move that we accept this RDA negative two plus dewatering. Okay, so it was in it, but you want that added as well? Yes, please, because it's not, yes. Plus okay, there's that motion. Second. I have a second, all in favor, Kwame. Yes. Michael. Yes. Mary. Yes. Elissa. Yes. Sandy, yes. Uh, approved. Uh, Russ, speak to Dave before you start any work, okay? Will do. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Yep. Good evening. Good evening. Evening. Next one, please. Public hearing. Uh, pursuant to the provisions of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Wareham Wetland Protective Bylaw, Division 6, a public hearing will be held on Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021, 6 30 p.m., on the request for determination of applicability for Lad Homes, LLC, PO Box 175, East Falmouth, Massachusetts, 025. Three, six, to reconstruct a deck located on Assessor's Map 6, Lot 45, 57 Jefferson Shores Road, Wareham, Mass. Thank you. Is there anybody here to represent this project? There, there are some people on the line um, for this. Don and Elaine here with the property owners. Can you hear us? Yes, thank yes. you. Okay. Thank you. Well, our our, our uh, contractor, I thought, was on the line, too. I didn't know if he wanted to jump in first. Well, yes, this, oh, there I, we I go. There he is. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Burchette will read to the project, and then we'll ask if you have anything to add. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so this project site is at 57 Jefferson Shores Road. And this is an after the fact filing for work that's already been done at the site, which involved the 
reconstruction of a deck in the buffer zone to a coastal bank. Um, an existing 12 by 24 foot deck was removed and a new deck constructed in the same general location uh, with new footings. And this is approximately five to eight feet from the top of the coastal bank at the property. Um, so we did receive some photos as well of what had existed there previously, which I can bring up to show. Um, so I, I agree that this was in existence and they rebuilt it the same location. They just kind of jumped the gun and did it without conservation approval. Um, so I would recommend the approval of the project with a negative determination number three with the removal of any debris um, from the project. And if the commission wishes fines, then that should be included as well. Okay. Donnie Lane, did you want to add anything or is your contractor online? I am online. And Thank you. And um, it is correct that uh, we did not come in in front of you uh, earlier, the misunderstanding, and uh, we apologize for, for that. But as soon as um, we realized that the permit had not been issued, we stopped work and uh, split the project up so that we could finish the front of the house. And we left the deck as it is, um, still needing railings. And so right now we have a safe issue that must be addressed. Okay, um, I'm going to ask the commission if they have any questions. Kwame? Um, no, not this time. Michael? No, I'm no. good, thank you. Mary? No questions. Alyssa? Um, we didn't mention, is this the time you want to mention fines, Sandy, or not? We can, we'll talk, we can talk about fines when we go to make the um, motions. Okay. But we historically, we have found the property owner and the contractor for doing work before it was permitted. But yeah. um, any questions on the project? No. Um, I noticed there was a section um, where the bird feeder is. Has that always been cleared of all um, plant material? Iris, they grow there, but they're they're dormant now for the winter season. But yeah, there's that's what was there. Okay, so it wasn't cleared by you. No, no, no. And all the flag staff that's flag stone that's off on the side that will be used or be removed. We're in the middle of landscaping the yard, and we we put it there for now. Um, okay. So, we yeah. Yeah, it will be moved and repurposed probably in the front yard. All right. Thank you. Uh, anybody on the line that would like to speak for or against this project? Cindy, I have a question. Do we have the wrong numbers here? Is this lot 45 or is this lot 46? This is lot 46. This is lot 46 and then the reconstruction of a deck of the deck, it says lot 45 on our, on our agenda. Do we have a wrong posting? That's my question. The, the Two lots are on the same. On yeah, it's the same, it's the same property. Let me just go back up. Um, Do we have the right map number? Yeah, the map and lot as was presented is and right here. Lot. 45 and yeah, they right it says 46 but it says 46 right we do own both lots uh-huh but they're separate for separate tax parcels so what lot is the work done on 46 uh, you go back to your map uh, 46 46 is where the deck in house is. Yeah. 45 is a vacant lot. Exactly. Oh, okay, now, 
Mr. Bichette, do we have a wrong posting and have to repost? Um, I mean, it's obvious that the property is the same property owned by both. They own both lots. Um, you know, I don't think it's a major issue, but it's ultimately the call of the commission. If you want to see it redone, then we would have to continue and, you know, go back to that. I think we just have to correct it on the papers. We'll be glad to do that. <laughs> okay. Um, I did ask everybody if they had any questions. I asked if anybody online had any questions. There were none. Okay, so I bet we close the hearing. And I have a motion to close the hearing. Second. I have a second. All in favor, Kwame? Yes. Michael? Yes. Mary? Yes. Alyssa? Yes. Sandy? Yes, the hearing is closed. All right, so I move that we accept the project with a negative three. Is that correct? Yes, Mary? yes. Yep. Um, with the usual uh, regulations for anything close to the water regarding nitrogen and so on and so forth. Plus fines. I think that there should be a fine if we're going to be consistent. So your motion is a $300 fine for the homeowner and a $300 fine for the contractor for starting work before they were permitted? Where's my group? Nobody else speaks? Well, you were making the motion. Okay, yes. Okay, so that's the motion. Second. All in, I heard a second. All in favor, Kwame, Michael, yes. Yes. Mary, yes. Alyssa, yes. Sandy, yes. So the uh, negative three, um, finish up on the project and um, f two fines were issued and uh, speak to Dave. Anything more have to be done because right now the railings are above ground and have no effect on the uh, soil disturbance. So I can say the railings can go in, right, Dave, before you finish the paperwork? Um, yes, yep. Since it is a safety issue? Okay. Yes, and the commission approved it, so. Yes. All right. Any questions from anyone? Thank you. Nix, please. Thank you very much for your time. Thank, yeah, thank you. you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Provisions of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Wareham Wetland Protective Bylaw, Division 6. Public hearing will be held on Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021, at 6 30 p.m. on the request for an amended order of conditions. Tina DeAngelis, Care of Lockwood Architects, P.O. Box 95, Onset Mass. To request a plan change to include driveway located on Assessor's Map 28. Lots 47, 48, 21 Bayberry Road, Wareham, Massachusetts. Thank you. Is there anybody here representing this project? Mr. Lockwood is here. Although I can't hear him. Can you hear me now? Yep, yes. There we go. There you are. All right, Dave, you. your turn. Okay. Um, this project site is at 21 Bayberry Road and the request is to amend an order of conditions to include a plan change um, to a project that we had previously approved, which involved the construction of a garage in the buffer zone to a coastal bank and within a coastal flood zone. Um, the requested change is to include a crushed stone driveway to the garage, uh, which was not proposed on the original application. Um, so a crushed stone driveway is proposed to connect from the existing stone driveway to the new constructed garage. Um, the site is a flat site and the driveway surface would be a pervious material. Um, all of the proposed work is outside the 30 foot no activity zone to the coastal bank. Um, so I would recommend approval of the amendment as presented. 
Bill, anything anything to add? Uh, that, no, they, they, um, they've stated it very well. We uh, just inadvertently left that off the plan when we um, initially proposed and uh, uh, did, rather than delay the project, we decided to come back later to pick, the, pick up this piece of paper. Thank you. Questions on the board, Kwame. Um, how long is this driveway? It says 87. Uh, 60 feet. Oh, 60. Sorry. Crushed down. Well, it's, it's a little longer than that. It's probably, if you're, if you're talking everything in green, is that right. what's well, new? Yeah. 60 feet to the property line. And, uh, and there's, there's some area there that's between what's, uh, what's stone and what, what is the property line? Yeah. Probably closer to 120 when you add it all up as far as what's proposed. Yep. Okay. Uh, that That's it. Thank you. Michael. Uh, um, no, thanks. Mary. No question. Elissa. You have one question, and that is that there's, there's the stone embankment that's there and it has all the um it has sort of crushed stone behind it is that all crushed stone is that new uh the stone embankment at the at the, the stone embankment has been there for years i'm just yeah that's been that inside yeah. the stone embankment it there's all sorts of heavy uh, there's a lot of crushed stone i just am wondering was that there before i don't know the answer to that Alyssa. Um, my understanding is that we haven't done any work there to my, to my knowledge. So. Anything else? No, ma'am. Um, will there be any utilities uh, attached to this garage? Their electricity has already been run out there. What about water? Um, no, no water to my knowledge. I, he's got a water line, yes. Uh, for water water. Line. Yeah. Which, which they said they weren't going to have. Yeah, because I'm surprised because I went back and I looked at the original plan. There was nothing to put water or electrical lines to the proposed garage. I actually asked if there will be water at the garage and they said no. Bill? Yeah, um, and I may be mis um, misinformed, but I thought he was going to have a spigot there. Oh, well, they have to do some digging in order to get the water line, but we, so Alyssa asked, add that we know utilities out there, but you're saying they have electricity and they have, will have water. I think when we discussed it, we knew they'd have electricity, but they stated they wouldn't have water. Yep. Yeah, so I don't think that was included on the original plan um, as as a, a feature. So um, is that something then that you're going to want to include as part of this uh, amendment? Wouldn't. I, I would say yes. So and if it's already been put in, then, uh, you know, again, that's sort of work that was done prior to approval. But um, again, uh, it's something I think the commission would have approved had had it been um, presented in the first place. I think, Dave, they were presenting it as if it was like a shed, a very cute shed. And and on the day that we first saw it, there was no talk of making this into a home or a house or or a. In nor is thing. nor um, is there. Now. Well, it says on this map right here, existing shed to be removed. Was that shed there the entire time? No, it's been removed. No, even beforehand, what was there a shed? Because I, I don't recall ever seeing a shed out there. There was a um, shed there right against the property line. Yeah, there was a small shed there. There was yeah. a small shed there? It was a yeah. shed. It was exactly that. It was a shed. Okay, okay. But it didn't have electricity and it didn't have water. Because at this point, it's starting to look like a house, if you ask me. Yeah. 
Yeah, we've seen what happened when someone else put up a uh, shed within Michael's view of the water and all of a sudden it looks like a two-story home. So we are concerned that this will be turned into something that's a living quarters. I will tell you that I purposely designed certain features of the structure so that it could not, would not uh, legally qualify as that. Um, <laughs> so no sewer hookups. Stairways without headroom and um, things like that. Um, so there's no, there's nothing inside like sinks or bathrooms. No. Okay. Uh, any other questions on, on from the board? If not, I'll ask anybody online that would like to speak for or against this project. I'm hearing none. Come on, somebody other somebody, please close the hearing. All right, I move to close the hearing. Thank you. Second. I have a second. All in favor, Kwame? Yes. Michael? Yes. Mary? Yes. Alyssa? Sandy? Yes. The hearing is closed. When we make the amendment to the order of conditions um, for the driveway for water and electric, is that what you want us to include, Dave? Why? Um, well, I think... Um, I said it wasn't going to be. Well, you, you can include that as a condition that you're approving those utilities. Um, you know, that's something you can add as the condition. But the electricity is already there. I was going to say, it sounds like they've already got the water in too, Bill. Is that right? Yes, I believe that's, that's my understanding. So, you know, I don't know. Did we lose her? No. I don't know. It's, it's a crazy thing. I mean, these are things I know that um, Mr. Lockwood's here and, um, you know, I'm glad he made things that wouldn't be conducive to, to living there. But it does seem to me that, as Michael said, that it's like a little house, a little cottage they can rent out. I don't know. So do we want the amended order conditions only for the driveway? Well, they already have everything. So they have everything that has was um, never, that were never, was never approved. That's right. So when they come back for a certification of compliance, they will not have built the plan. Well, that's very true, it seems. Or, or what could happen is, um, the applicant could, you know, come back with an, an additional revision to the plan to reflect these features. And then it would be up to the commission as to whether or not you wanted to approve them. Um, if so, then they would be in compliance. If not, then they could be required to remove them. I mean, so it's up to the commission as to what you want to approve or don't want to approve. Okay, then I would recommend that we follow the particular requests that they've made for this change of plan for the driveway only. Um, we would um, we would like to uh, do everything that we need to do to make what we've done compliant. Um, and we understood, I thought we were doing those things, but... Um, my memory is apparently errant on this. But we'd be happy to amend the, amend the plan and uh, come back for a, a continuance if that's the pleasure of the board. Rather than Comments, please, from the board. Um, I, I think there's, by, by continuing it, I think that maybe then we can get a better look at things as as mr lockwood said that it might be a better way than nitpicking and making him non-compliant i mean i think that 
I think sometimes people get building and they realize, gee, this is really nice. I might like to have an outdoor shower here or something like that, you know. Um, I, I, I don't I think, know. I think you've just closed the hearing though, Sandy. Yes, I did. I just closed the hearing. Sorry. Please. I can make a motion to open the hearing again. So moved. Um, I don't know if you can really do that. I think well, I think you would just have to vote on the driveway and then they could come back with a, with another request or the commission could entertain a revision um, during the certificate of compliance. But if you wanna make them come in for another amendment, then that's what you could do, but you've kind of already closed the hearing. Oh. Okay, so I can't unclose it, huh? No. Okay. So, hearing is closed, amendment, uh, make them, someone or, needs to make a motion. The, the other thing you could do is you could, uh -huh. with the conditions, you could approve the driveway and say as a condition that you're also going to allow the water main or the water service and the electric with a revised plan to be submitted to the commission. You could put that as a condition. If, if you want to have the water there. It's already it's there. It's already there. So take it out. No, but I'm saying if you want to vote to allow it, then you could put that as a condition to approve it. If you, if you don't, then you can have it be required to be removed. That's up to the commission. <clears throat> Well, I can see why they would honestly wash their cars or something, then That's they would want water good. there. That's Washing your car about. right next to the ocean is not such a good thing, Sandy. Okay. Well, you but if you wash it on the ground, gasoline and everything else, then it's right next to the ocean. But that was just an example. And so go right ahead. Well, the soap no longer has phosphorus in it. Okay, board, what would you like to do? I, we've got a couple options. Somebody needs to make a motion. I say we, do, we continue this with um, the, his other plans. I can't continue because we've closed the hearing. I mean, he needs to present, um, he needs to reopen and submit his plans, his new plans. Or as Dave suggested, we condition the approval based on revised plans with the water and electrical um, hookup. Mm -hmm. But you want a brand new hearing. I heard, a, I saw a shake of a yes. I say yes. All right, anybody else on the board? What do you want like to do? Another hearing for another amendment for water and electric? Somebody speak up, come on, Mary. Michael. Oh, Alyssa. Sandy, you know, huh? okay, here we are. Um, nobody else is going to speak to this project. It's kind of a tough one because I just, you know, I think that we should hear it again. We should see the plan, bring the plan up. Um, it's just another case of um, it's easier to apologize at, rather than do it up front. Okay. So the amendment to the order of conditions for the driveway and the refiling of amendment for water and electric to the detached garage. Is that the motion? Kwame, is that your motion? That is my motion. I'll second Kwame's motion on that. And I have a second. All in favor, Kwame? Yes. Michael? Yes. Mary? Yes. Alyssa? Sandy? Yes. <laughs> the driveway has been approved and we'll have another uh, modification to the uh, order of conditions when for the elect for the utilities. Okay? That sounds like it's done. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Lockwood. Sorry about that. 
Next uh, one, please. Next one. Okay. Three, four. And that would be uh, Warren. Pursuant to the provisions of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Wareham Wetland Protective Bylaw Division 6, a public hearing will be held on Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021, at 6.30 p.m. on the Notice of Intent for Danny Warren Warren, Q's OZB LLC, care of GAF Engineering, Inc., 266 Main Street, Wareham, Massachusetts, 02571 to construct a commercial marina located on Assessor's Map 47, Lot 1124, 59 Main Street, Wareham, Mass. Thank you. Anybody here to speak for this project? Yes, Madam Chairman, Bob Rogers with GAF Engineering. Thank you, Mr. Bichette. Okay, so this project site is located at 59 Main Street, and the project involves the construction of a commercial marina on the Wareham River in um, land under the ocean, um, riverfront area within the buffer zone to a coastal bank and within a coastal flood zone. Um, it's, to pro it's proposed to install floating docks along the existing bulkhead with 15 finger piers um, going out from those floats and the longest one going out approximately 48 feet into the river from the floating docks along the bulkhead. Um, approximately 860 linear feet of floating dock is proposed. Uh, I did have a question about what is the overall square footage of the floating docks. Um, the project would involve installing 32 12 inch diameter pilings to attach the floating docks to as as shown, um, the longest finger pier would be approximately 56 feet out from the bulkhead, and that's um, at the end of the project that's closest to the British landing side of the project. Um, typically, we, we would require some floats or markers to be put out into the water to show the general distance um, of the proposed work out into the water. Um, that had not been done as of the time of our site visit. So that's something that, in my opinion, should be done. Uh, we also had questions about how the floating docks would attach to the existing bulkhead and be able to rise and fall with the tide. And there was also a question of um, some of the existing pilings along the bulkhead. Um, would those need to be replaced? And if so, how many? Um, also, the plan does not show any other associated work such as parking, stormwater structures, uh, buildings, pump out system, and so on. Uh, in my opinion, the plan should show all aspects of the project so that the commission um, can adequately review what's being proposed to determine if it meets um, the standards that it needs to meet. And there was also a question of whether or not the project would need a sewer connection, um, which, it show, which, which it looks like they are proposing on the plan. Uh, another question I had was, has the applicant filed for a site plan review um, or other local permits that are required? Um, so to my knowledge, that has not been done. So again, I think that's a reason why the commission could not make a decision at this time. So um, we have also not received comments from the Mass Division of Marine Fisheries on the project. We did get a DEP file number, um, but at this time I would recommend a continuance for a full project plan, um, for other local permits to be applied for, for the float markers to be put out in the water, and also for comments from the Mass Division of Marine Fisheries. Bob, any comments, please? Um, yes. So uh, the owner of this property, you know, has some really ambitious plans for the property. He would he would really like to make it an amenity to the town um, and, and really be a huge improvement 
um, on this piece of property for, for both the neighborhood and the town as a whole and to get away from sort of the working waterfront um, that was the history of this property in the past. And so what we were trying to uh, accomplish is to initi you know, initiate the waterside permitting of the floating docks and, and the, the waterside aspect of the marina. Um, it's the, the use of this property is not gonna be 100% marina. Um, the owner would like one or two very attractive uh, multi-use buildings. And, but we're, we're a long ways away, potentially a long ways away from doing that. Um, so this dock and, and the amount of floats and the square footage of floats is the exact same as what was permitted in the past uh, with DEP and uh, the Army Corps. And so we felt like it was reasonable to, to initiate permitting of that same design. Um, the permits for that ran out in 2013. Um, we're certainly willing, uh, we will obviously agree to a, a continuance tonight um, we, we would like a determination from the commission that we can continue with the goal of providing the information that's needed, um, you know, relative to the dock system. Um, if we are, you know, if we have to fully design, you know, this, this portion of the project doesn't need planning board approval. Um, and so if we were put in a position where we had to fully design the whole site, we would, we would just lose um, however many months that, that we could be in process um, with chapter 91. Um, I, think, I think there's maybe three piles, maybe a couple more that might need to be replaced along that bulkhead. Um, we, we've had a conversation or, or we'll have whatever conversations that we need to with the Marine, marine contractor in order to um, get some more detail on, on those landings and how they would attach to the bulkhead. Um, we've got a system in mind where we can use the existing pilings um, to get uh, some free space for the U-hooks to so the, everything goes up and down and you know, including if it has to go up all the way to the 100 year flood elevation of 16. Um, I think when we were at the onsite, I think it's, it's pretty easy to envision all along the way. Um, you know, the, the, the plans are pretty specific in terms of eight feet wide and then you're going out either 40, you know, excuse me, 34, 32. Um, I think we had a good idea of where um, that last float to the south is. But if, if the commission thinks that it, you know, for whether it be for, um, you know, commissioners or the public or Division of Marine Fisheries, um, if you think we need to put, a, you know, a few, a few buoys out there, I, I would um, hope to avoid every single one of the, one of the finger floats. But, um, you know, if we, if we need to do that, we can certainly do that. Um, and I guess, um, depending upon, you know, how much you want to see, um, you know, I, we could be looking at a two week continuance. We could be looking at a one month. Um, if, we, if we had to adhere to all of uh, Mr. Prechette's recommendations, that would be a substantial uh, either continuance or re refiling really. So, thank uh, you. Back to Questions. you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Questions on the board, Kwame. Um, there's a lot of questions, but because this is so raw right now, I just I really don't have any that were particular at this time. Michael. Yeah, I got one. Presuming that the project is is, is approved, um, do we know if construction will occur during like certain tides of the Wareham River? Yeah, there's a uh, pretty good water depth here and there's obviously a good flow at certain times. Um, we have the benefit of, um, you know, having an open site right now. And um, so I think a lot of this can be done from the land side. 
including the driving of those piles. I think if you've only got to go out so far, um, but you know, if, if, if there are specific conditions related to that, I guess I'd, I'd want to see what those were. Um, I think most of this work can be done from the land side. All right. Mary. No question at this time, I'll be continuing. Elissa. No. Nope. I would like to see at least a uh, floater, a marker from the furthest one on the left to the furthest one on the right. And then we can eyeball between the first and the last ones where the piers, where the floaters, sorry, where the Piers would end. But here's a question for you, Bob. Yes. How many parking spaces must we, must we have for these many boats? There must be a law someplace that says I have to have parking for all these vessels. Is it, um, yes, there is. I, I want to throw out, um, you know, one per five, but... Um, you know, I, I, I'll provide, I'll confirm whatever the requirement is. I, I want to say it's one space per, per five slips. Okay. But Part of me says the alterations to this site in order to support the marina is parking. Correct. And that's why I keep referring to this as the water side of the project, because the town wouldn't... It, the town's at no risk to simply approve this amount of work, knowing that we have to come back for anything else. And so, you know, there's, there's no risk um, and no benefit really. Uh, I mean, there's. Um, I have to disagree with that because the risk is you permit some, some peers and then an application comes in for the landward work that doesn't meet any standards and therefore you can't approve it. And you've already approved these peers that now um, cannot be accessed properly because you don't have proper parking, stormwater, all this other stuff. So well, to me, the, the, the project is for a marina and a marina requires parking and parking requires stormwater uh, treatment. So again, I just can't see how you would say you're gonna permit this without seeing the actual project. So if, if we get approval for this from the town and DEP and the Army Corps, and he cannot build a function center up, a high-end restaurant building. Um, so there's three options. So either he reconfigures it and it simply becomes a commercial marina, um, or he, you know, provides the parking that is tailored for just the marina or or he doesn't build the floating docks um and and you know there's still the option of an industrial waterfront where there are no finger piers or boats and uh you know it, it sort of reverts back to the, its historical use which is not this owner's vision but but again i you know under any of those scenarios um, getting this, you know, going with DEP with a, an order of conditions with whatever special conditions you choose to include, it just, it just gets us into that 276-day queue with uh, Chapter 91. Okay. Dave, can you confer with Ken Buckland that planning is not needed for this particular project as is presented to us? that no zoning or planning board approval is needed for this? Can you confirm well, well, with that? We've already, I already know that it is gonna be needed. In other words, if you're gonna have, if you're gonna have a use like this, it requires site plan review. All right, but then not, Bob not says we don't need it. Well, only because we're not depicting the things that you know, are in, in the design process and, and really still being conceptually thought out um, but in this plan so you're adding water and electric lines and sewer lines so you're doing more than water side work it's well correct it's the it's the utilities for the the slips 
Well, do oh. they have to be put, sorry, do they have to be put in right now? If you only want to do water side work? No. Because all of a sudden I'm saying to myself, I got water lines underground, I've got a sewer line underground, and now my next plan for whatever the second or third phase is means they have to be dug up and relocated. I mean, since we don't know what's going to happen be beyond the, the walkway. So I, I can investigate if that's a legitimate option that we would remove all utilities currently shown and On the plan. show the floating yeah. docks. If, if that's something that we can do, I'll, I'll, I'll find out about well, that. I certainly don't want to delay. I understand Danny Warren's plan to try to get this in the queue because it takes so long. But I also understand Dave's condition of uh, concern that we're approving something that we don't fully understand. And that is a concern for me and I'm sure maybe the other uh, commissioners. Well, you're, I mean, you're going to have full uh, review and authority to approve or deny all aspects of, of what's unfortunately not not designed yet yeah you know, again, I just, a, I, I just a restaurant don't. doesn't isn't you know tied yeah. you know it doesn't um you know the marina it's it's yes you need parking yes you need a bathroom um it you know but the the real amenities well, he, that, sorry that the i don't even see a bathroom on here that's correct well, well, this so is what I'm saying. The, is that the project, the project that's in front of this commission, is a commercial marina. Um, and again, marinas require docks, and marinas also require parking, and probably a building, bathrooms, and everything. And and again, I'm not trying to say that I'm not uh, or that I'm opposed to the concept. It's just we have an incomplete plan here that, as far as I'm concerned, the commission should not entertain until you get an actual full plan to review. That's that's my recommendation to the commission. And so Dave, yep, would you be looking for a full plan for the full bull build out of this lot or just what is required to support a marina? At, at this time, just to support what's required for a marina because that's all that's being proposed right now. Okay, Bob, can you, uh, to me that requires a parking plan? And a and building. If, and the if bathroom. We, yeah, whatever is going to be there for a structure needs to be identified. Well, just, parking and stormwater. It, I mean, it doesn't make sense. To, I think it's either we're allowed to proceed with the water side on its own, or we have to put in everything because it doesn't make sense to show something that really isn't part of the of this owner's vision for the property. Um, you know, I'd like to be able to come back and answer the questions, put the buoys out, take care of the docks. And um, but so I guess I'm agreeing to a continuance to provide that. And I, I guess I'd be looking for the, you know, what is the opinion of, of the commission in, with respect to Dave's recommendation? Um, you know, we thought we could, you know, get started with this with with DEP. Wow. I, I, all right, as far as your buoys out there, didn't we say that, that you basically need really one buoy because this, the far, the, the, um, the dock closest to the apartments um, is, is at, the, at about 48 feet. Did you say that, Dave, on that day? Yes, that's the that's the one that's the furthest out. Yes, that's about forty eight feet. So you had said so. He's we're talking fifty feet for being the the, the farthest out, or is forty eight feet the farthest out? In other words, do we need do we need to put the buoys out? I would like to see two, one at each end. Then we can visually draw the line between the furthest and the shortest. I, I think that if, if um, 
Bob has the questions that we, we need answered, I think that we can continue it. And I think it's a project that's worthwhile really uh, considering and getting done for the town. Okay. And only on the water side. So Bob, that means uh, a modification to the plan. So that we only considered the work on the water side of the concrete walkway. <laughs> Is that one way to put it? But Sandy, if, if this is going to be the water side buoys there, does, um, do we have to have a, um, a water plan or anything like that for, for bathrooms or some sort of, um, do we need to put that in at this point? I'm getting a toss up. I'm saying, do we want to see all the things that are necessary to support a marina? or do we only want to allow water side work? Well, again, one thing just to be clear on, you have to go by what was submitted by the applicant, which, which is to construct a commercial marina. That's what's been proposed, so. And so your stand is that, show us everything associated with the commercial marina, not just the floating piers. That's my, that's my recommendation. Cause again, how, how do you know if you're even gonna approve the project as a whole, if things are not in compliance okay. with regards to parking and stormwater uh, treatment so, for the parking and all that. So on this plan, we're missing the stormwater, we're missing the parking and we're missing a um, facility um, for bathrooms or and, sheds or something. Yeah, and, and and so and right. So we, again, we I I understand a hundred percent, but so we're just trying to proceed. We we're trying to get an order of conditions that is for the chapter ninety one related portion of the project. That's that's about the best way that I can put it. If chapter ninety one, if it's under oh. the jurisdiction, that's that's what we are trying to proceed with. Is there a, anything under the chapter 91 approval that says what is required for its approval other than just the peers? Yes, we, it, again, I, we're, so we're continuing. I'm, I, I can provide that documentation. There's a chapter 91 checklist, what you need to show. Um, we have the prior plans from 2008. Um, you know, that's what these plans are based on. You know, we did go the extra step in terms of the utilities. Um, but so anyway. there's a checkoff list as to what is required for chapter 91 approval. Correct. Are the plans in front of us total and complete for that checkoff list? I think they show more than than what is jurisdictional yep. under chapter 91. So you're telling me the chapter 91 doesn't care anything about the land side like parking or bathrooms. No, I don't think they care about the sewer or underground electric or whether you have water or don't. I, I don't believe so. Right. They, they're looking at structures um, below the high tide line as far as what they're permitting, but there may be some, I'd have to check to see if they would also consider any of the associated activity. But again, the associated activity is really more what the commission is here to review and determine whether or not it's appropriate. Okay. So Bob, I think, what, Bob, what would it take to add the identification of where parking would be and stormwater? Well, only to know that maybe there might be a modify an amendment to the order of conditions as more information is known for the rest of the lot. Well, well, right. So there, there's absolutely going to be a new notice of intent requesting an amended order of conditions when we're ready for that. What I'd like to try and do, Madam Chair, I guess, is uh, come back in two weeks with uh, as much information as I can to, to make a, a last attempt um, to convince the commission that we should be allowed to proceed and if, if I can't uh, convince you after we've done some more research and you've had time to think about it, then, you know, then, you know, again, we're at the mercy of the wishes of the commission. Okay. So the, the amend, you might very well think seriously about removing the water, electric and sewer lines off this if you're only 
planning to do water side work? Yes, we'll, we'll discuss that in the office. And, and Okay. Absolutely. We'll put the two so, boards out and we'll work on the other items. Thank you. Any other questions from the commissions? If not, I'll ask the public if they have any comments. I, I have a quick question. The, uh, the, the walkway to the marina uh, where the boats are going to be uh, is that going to be uh, redone too as well, or is that this going to be as is? No, it's the way it is. There might yeah. be some small areas for repair, mm -hmm. but I think that's in good shape. Okay. And it's, we are planning, you are planning to put in some type of fencing, correct? That's correct. There's a uh, steel, steel handrail uh, along the edge of the existing concrete okay. block. And that will continue to be on your plan because it's water side work. I, th I think it is. It, uh, again, but not that it's going to it's it's only going to be constructed once we, you know, have the uh, all the permits, which is, you know, takes a while. Okay. But that's an it's important safety feature. Thank you. Uh, anybody from the public want to comment on this project? If not, I will take a motion to continue until the 17th. Take that motion. I have that motion. Second. I have a second. Uh, we're continued to the 17th. Thank you, Bob. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. Next one, please. All righty. Notice of public hearing. Pursuant to the provisions of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Wareham Wetland Protective Bylaw Division 6. A public hearing will be held on Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. on notice of intent for Roger Keyes, care of Alpha Survey Group, LLC, 695 Wareham Street, Middleborough, Mass, 02346. To construct a garage, an addition, and a new driveway located on Assessor's Map 29, Lot 1013, 7 Harvard View, Lane, Wareham, Massachusetts. Is there anybody here to represent this project? Yes, Madam Chair, Jim Peterson from Alpha Survey. Hey, Jim, I'm very disappointed nothing was staked out. But Mr. Pichette will read to the project. Do we read to the project or do you not accept the project, Sandy? Read to, Dave needs to read to the project. Okay. Yep, let me just get this plan up here. Yes, Jim, you could probably tell the fines are in, going to be coming. Okay, so this um, project site is at 7 Harbor View Lane, and the project involves the construction of an addition, a garage, and a new driveway um, in the buffer zone to a coastal bank. A 24 by 26 foot garage and a 14 by 24 foot addition are proposed approximately 65 feet from the top of the coastal bank. Uh, excavation for the foundation work has already been started at the site. Um, we did not get a DEP file number for this project um, at this time. So um, with that, I would have to recommend a continuance um, until we get the DEP file number and um, see if there's any comments um, from them on this project. Jim, is there anything you want to add? Not really. Uh, Dave is correct in saying that we we just submitted to DEP recently, um, so we haven't heard back, and obviously you haven't heard back either. Um, you know, the project is what it is. The bottom line is that the owner of the property pursued a um, special permit to allow the setback from the road to be less than the required distance. 
and basically got approval for building, was issued a building permit. And uh, once again, we didn't represent the owner, so we were not involved in any conversations with the town or with or with uh, in public hearing. So we prepared a plan, the owner presented it, got the special permit, got a building permit and was of the understanding it could move forward. And I'm not even sure exactly when uh, Mr. Pichette was uh, told about the project. Once again, we weren't involved uh, and that's where we are today. And, and the owner once again thought he had permission to move forward because he had the building permit. So uh, I'm just speaking from the history of what I know. We've picked it up here with filing the notice of intent. And obviously what you see on the ground is, is uh, the result of the owner making a decision to move forward with the understanding that he had a building permit. Okay. Um, Dave, what happened? Why did they get a building permit without conservation to write a sign off? Can you, I mean, I thought well, I we think, had this pretty much under control. Well, normally I think that's the case. I think there was some issues here with um, initial plans that didn't represent everything that should have probably been shown. Um, and so when there was a revised plan submitted to the zoning board, we never saw that. And that's the plan that showed the coastal banks and so forth. So um, because the initial plan didn't show these features, um, I think that's how they initially got the building permit or were approved to have a building permit. So then when they submitted this plan to the zoning board for their approval, it showed additional information and I didn't see that when it was going before the zoning board. I only saw it once they tried to continue on with things. And that's when I noticed the, the features that were shown and required that they have conservation approval. So I don't think it's entirely the fault of the owner as far as getting started. I think there was some confusion with, you know, if they had the approvals in place or not. So that's all I can really say and we can we can go over those details, but that's basically the background of it that I'm familiar with. That's correct, Madam Chair. And I would like to just man mention that Alpha didn't prepare the initial plan that was provided to uh, the zoning board. It was actually prepared by the builder and we got involved uh, after they were initially rejected by the zoning board of appeals for not having an appropriate plan and that's when we created a plan specifically to address the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, but obviously it started to show these other uh, environmental factor, factors or features uh, that you see here. So the, lit, the homeowner thought he had everything he needed to start the work and that's where we are. That's my understanding, correct. Okay. Now, um, before I'm going in, I'm going to ask the commissions, but I have a document in the paperwork I got that says bordering vegetated wetlands, no activity is proposed within 100 feet of a BVW or other freshwater wetland buffer. Is that true? Uh, yes, we're within the 100 feet of the, the coastal bank. It says no activity is proposed within 100 feet. So you're I'm outside. Not sure, I'm not sure if that's something that might have been revised. I'd have to go back and look to see what you're seeing, actually. Are you well, looking I, at? I took it out of the notice of intent document. It included a picture of the um, foundation for the um, garage. Yeah, and they might have said that they're not within the buffer to any bordering vegetated wetland, which they're not, but they are in the buffer zone to a coastal bank. The proposed, then it goes on, the proposed addition and driveway are located outside of the limits of the SFHA zone AE elevation 15. Right, that's, that's the special flood hazard zone. So that's something different. So, um, so the, the, the comment that they're outside the buffer to wetlands is, is true, but they are in the buffer to a coastal bank. 
That's because the coastal bank sort of, sort of looks like it got destroyed. Yeah, at some point in the history in the in the past. That's right. Right. That wasn't okay. by the current owner. That was no. That I know. That's been gone a long time. Okay. You can tell by looking at the vegetation that's been removed. Um. Okay. I'm going to ask. I've got more questions, but I'll start. Kwame, anything? Uh, no. Thank you. Mike. Michael. Uh, Sandy, actually, a question for you. Did you say you, you were there today, but it was, or there recently, rather, and this wasn't staked out? Yeah, I was there. When was I there? Alan and I, Monday, I think we drove by after, after the, we watched the war and property. I was by Monday, and I didn't see any staking for the um, activity being proposed. I, I tried going by there today and I, I couldn't find the house and, and couldn't find any stakes. May, maybe that was why. Okay, thanks. Mary? At least I was in the wrong area. I found uh, some staking, but it looked like more for a, a long driveway. So I had some oh, questions did. of it. Was it Jimmy, any idea? Driveway? Uh, well, we originally staked out the foundation, which obviously was then dug, and the stakes that we had for that were removed. Uh, with regards to uh, current staking of what of where the proposed garage in addition would be within the area that was excavated, you're correct. We did not stake that out. And they're really, right. you can tell where the driveway is because that's been driven over umpteen times. But we usually like to have things staked out so we can see the, the limit of work being proposed. Yes. They did stake it previously. And as I said, I'm sure it's been dug up, but we, we had a few stakes the first time we saw this. And when was the last time we saw this? Hmm. Not very long ago. I don't know exactly. Mm. Um. Liz, anything else? No. Um, Jim, how many of these trees have to be removed? Because if I see where the low area is, which is probably the driveway, there's a fairly decent 10 or 12 inch diameter pine that will that have to be removed? Oh, darn, excuse me. I apologize for that. We didn't unplug our phone. Not a problem. Um, yes, those two trees would have to be removed to put the proposed driveway in as you see it on this plan. The owner has suggested, although I'm not exactly sure how it would work, is that he could use the existing uh, driveway, which we have labeled as re to be removed. And uh, he feels as though he has room to get his vehicles in there. I have some concern about whether he can do that or not. But as proposed here, yes, we would be removing two trees uh, to put in that proposed crushed stone driveway. Oh, see, here I was thinking the driveway was the one that would has all the marks on it. I was looking at the wrong place. Oh. I was thinking it was going up through that area, existing dirt drive that comes up into the area that's already been cleared. I was thinking that's, but I can see where they are over there on the left. Yes, correct. Okay. All right. Anybody online like to speak for this project for or against? If not, we can take a continuance for the DEP and staking of the driveway. I move that we um, postpone this till the next meeting. Is that going to give enough time? Continued until the 17th? Yes. We can certainly have it staked out by then. Hopefully DEP has responded with a, uh, a file number for this. Okay. Um, 
I need a motion to close to continue the hearing, uh, Kwame. Motion to clear the hearing, yes. Michael, yes. Mary, Alyssa, Sandy, we're continued until the 17th for the DEP and staking of the driveway. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. All right, continued hearings. We have a peak contractors. Anybody here for that particular project? Good evening, Brad Bertolo, JC Engineering. Hi, Brad. Hey. Okay, Mr. Pichette. All right, let me just get this plan up here. We were waiting for DEP. Did it come in? Yes. Okay. And we also have a plan revision. Oh. Okay. Okay, so this project site is at 150 Cremisit Road and the project involves the construction of a single family dwelling in the buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetland and within a coastal flood zone. Um, a 26 by 36 foot dwelling is proposed within flood zone AE elevation 16. Um, there are grade changes proposed around the foundation area to fill up around the foundation as, as shown. Um, the dwelling will be accessed by a shared driveway with the neighboring lot, and this dwelling would also have town sewer and water. Um, hay bales and sill fence would be installed between the work and the resource area, as shown on the plan, and that is along the limit of clearing. Um, at the last time we discussed this, there was a section on the plan that was denoted as selective tree cutting and mowing of the underbrush. So we were asking for some clarification on that. And so um, what's been described is that that entire area would be more or less turned into lawn, but a certain chunk of it, that second half closest to the water would be left with trees. The area between that dash green line um, right here and the house would just be grass with, that, with the trees cut for the most part. But in this area, you would have the tree canopy remaining. Um, the other revision to this plan is they did sort of shift the house slightly towards this property line um, to get it further away from this driveway. <clears throat> and they, all are, uh, they are also including a, um, the sewer line connection for this house and also for the neighboring house, which would also be tied in um, with this connection right here. So we also did get the DEP file number for the project. Um, so based on the revision that we have in front of us and the um, DEP number, I would recommend the approval of the project with the standard conditions. Um, and also acknowledging that um, the selective tree cutting work where that limitation is, that that's not necessarily clear cut right down to the limit of work. Say that again for me. I didn't write fast enough. Yeah, no, I was just saying um, on the plan, they're representing that this, this second half from this dash line to the hay bales would remain treed with some selective tree removal because they do want to take out some of the trees in there, um, but it would not be clear cut like the other part of the property would be. Would these be something, David, you would check off each of the trees that they're, they're taking down? Um, yes, yes, we could condition that. And I think um, Brad can explain that a little further um, with, with what they're looking to do there. Uh, thanks, Dave. Uh, 
I spoke with the applicant and he felt it would be easier just to, uh, or preferred to have an area of grass, um, basically almost like a park-like setting back there. If I, I didn't describe that initially, but uh, grass area that's gonna be mowed and yard area, but he doesn't wanna clear cut the uh, back portion. We anticipate uh, removing pine trees, uh, maybe limbing up some of the uh, larger pine trees so that we can keep some, some, some of the uh, pines, but keep most of the uh, deciduous and obviously remove any of the, the dead, dead trees. Um, again, we're proposing uh, a normal, uh, normal lawn uh, that he, the client may save a couple trees in, vicinity, in the vicinity of their house, but uh, just due to safety concerns, we usually like to keep a buffer away from the house uh, of trees. Um, so I think we tried to clarify that better uh, on this plan. And obviously we have no issue with a condition uh, being made that the applicant meet with the agent prior to work within that area. Thank you. Questions, Kwame? Um, no. Michael? No. Mary? No. Elissa? No. Sandy, I have no questions. Anybody on um, the line here for or against this project? Good evening. Russell Motto, I'm the applicant. I just wanted to let you know that I was here. If you had any concerns, I could answer for you. Thanks. Thank you. Move that we, is this a hearing? Do we close this hearing? I believe we're, without any other comments, we can probably close the hearing. I think I'll move to close the hearing. I have a motion. Second. I heard a second. All in favor, Kwame? Yes. Michael? Yes. Mary. Yes. Alyssa. Yes. Sanding, the hearing is closed. Move that we accept the project with the stipulation that Dave um, meets with the with the owner and determining what trees to be taken. Um, and plus with the standard order of conditions. With the standard order of conditions. Exactly. That be the motion. Second. Mm -hmm. I have a second. All in favor, Kwame? Yes. Michael? Yes. Mary? Yes. Alyssa? Yes. Sandy? Yes. So, um, Russ, before you did any work with Brad, uh, get a hold of Mr. Bichette so we can identify the trees that are to remain or remove, whichever would be easiest, but no work until you get to with Mr. Bichette on it, okay? Not a problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, continued hearing for Mello has requested a continuance until um, March 17th. Anybody on the line for that project? Hearing none, I'll take a motion to continue until the 17th. I have a motion. Second. I have a second. All in favor, Kwame? Yes. Michael? Yes. Mary? Yes. Alyssa? Yes. Sandy, yes, is continued until the 17th. We have a request for Borrego Solar Systems to continue until the 17th. Move. Anybody want to comment on this project before we continue it? Hearing none, I'll take a motion to continue until March 17th. So move. move. Second. I have a motion. Mary seconded. Okay, I have a second. All in favor, Kwame? Yes. Michael? Mary? Yes. Alyssa? Yeah. Sandy will continue until the 17th. Okay. Dave, you're up for an extension on request. Um, yes, yeah, so we have a request for an extension uh, of an order of conditions by um, the applicant, Mike Lenahan of um, Camp or Cleanup Agawam Mill Pond. 
he's on the line with us here. Um, so let me just put this up real quick. The request is to extend for three years when we normally do a one year extension. If I read it correctly. Yes, that, that's correct. So this, this project involves um, um, treatment, chemical treatment of the um, Agawam Mill Pond to control invasive aquatic nuisance vegetation. This is um, something they've been doing for a few years now, and now they're sort of in the maintenance phase of, of the work. And the order of conditions had a three-year lifespan, which is coming to an end, and they want to be able to continue to do the maintenance uh, activities, which is why they've requested their um, extension. So um, I'm fine with granting an extension. Um, so far, the results have been positive with this work. And so um, I'm fine with allowing the maintenance type uh, treatments to go forward. Um, they, they do continue to submit reports to us each year in terms of what's been going on. Um, it's just a matter of whether or not the commission wants to grant a, a one year or a three year extension to the uh, order. What's your recommendation, Dave? Well, to be consistent in what the commission's been doing, I would say a one-year extension. Um, the commission adopted that some time back just to be able to make sure that they can get updates um, from the applicant as to what's going on and possibly change any um, issues or questions or conditions they might have uh, as time goes on. So that's just been the policy, but I'll let Mr. Lenahan address um, his, his comments and requests as well yeah. since he's on the line. Mike, any comments on it? You were um, muted last I looked. I'm sorry, Sandy. Oh, you got, no, it's, no. Mike Lenahan from the C8, oh. from the applicant. <laughs> it's off. I got it. Mike, you're muted. Nope. There you, go. there you go. Okay, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I've been three, uh, it's been about seven years now and uh, we've been three years in the uh, maintenance stage. And so we pretty much do everything identical uh, every year. And, uh, but we, like Dave said earlier, you know, we submit a, uh, a plan for you in the springtime of what we're gonna do in the summer because it's a one day treatment. Uh, I described everything in the letter there. I don't know if everybody saw it, but just I gave you a little history. But... Yes, it was shared. Yeah, okay, great. Um, and so the opportunity that Dave's looking for is there every single year. I mean, it is capable of, of being extended for three years. Um, and this is kind of a unique project compared to maybe some other projects where, you know, so you have an opportunity to critique it uh, every spring and we have an opportunity to critique it in the fall when we, we submit the final report. Um, so, I mean, I think all the checks and balances are there anytime you want, if something happens or something, you know, we can, you can call it in and we can discuss it. So, I mean, we've had three of these things and we want three more um, and we've had no complaints. We, you know, we submit not just to you guys, we submit to Marine Fisheries, DEP and Endangered Species. And we've had, you know, great, results all the way through we've had no complaints uh and that's where we are it's just you know we kind of came upon this late a little bit at least i did um that it was expiring and um uh, and you know for us we just need a heads up because it's quite a lengthy process to try to mail do all the mailings and that stuff again but i mean i really don't see any risk of uh giving us three years since i'm coming we submit reports to you twice a year you know and dave's Dave knows me well, so he can get me like in a second. <laughs> hey. I'm not sure what kind of projects you normally do a year, but I don't think you're doing any of these projects. This is a little bit different, a little bit more, I would say, routine, Dave, right? I mean, we just, the thing starts to look alike every year, pretty much, you know? So, there is a, my con my concern is that it's possible within the two to three year extension, something has happened that would be a more, more effective chemical that could be developed as opposed to um, what you're currently, I mean, to me, 
I don't know. Ask the board. Right. Well, what I is it you'd like to do? I think yeah, we're requesting three. Um, like, yep, you're requesting three years. I think that I'll take what you give me. Okay, Alyssa. I think the Dave. I'm surprised it's to one year. I thought. I think with time, your time here and everything else, I thought for sure you would say three years would be no problem. It sounds like they send you letters and send you reports, but um, I, if you're pretty adamant about a one year. Um, renewal. I'd like to really know. I mean, I'm not saying per se that I'm adamant point. about it. I'm just simply saying that's been the commission's um, uh, policy, if you will. Um, so if the commission's comfortable with a three year extension, that's certainly within the commission's um, authority. The, the only thing to be conscious of is once you do grant the three-year extension, if there's something that you might not be comfortable with going down the line, you've already given them the three years and you can't take that back. So um, again, I don't think per se that's going to be an issue, but again, you can never foresee the future. And that's why I think the commission started um, going with one-year extensions for that reason, more or less. So that, that's all I have to say. If the commission's comfortable with three years and that's the commission's judgment. I mean, Dave, I'm not sure, you know, we have an order of conditions and we have to meet it every year. So uh, I'm not sure why I, you wouldn't be able to just say something's not right and call me in. I, I mean, I don't, how can I get an automatic, no matter what happens type of thing? I, I mean, I wasn't expecting anything like that. I'm willing to, you know, go in front of you like I've done the last five or six years and explain what we're going to do that spring and we can review the final report, that type of thing. Yeah, no, and that's fine. Like I said, this is really just a judgment call of the commission. Uh, whatever they wish to do is, is fine with me. Because as Dave said, historically, we have been uh, extending requests for one year at a time. But that's what we've been doing. But Sandy. Yes. What do you think? I would like to stay with what we've been doing for standard practice one year at a time. But that's me. I'm one of five. Kwame. Oh, put me in a tight position here. I'm but the uh, of everybody. <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, I, I think. Uh, what we had tabled before one year is something that we have to go with. So I have to say one year. Michael. I'll say the same. Uh, I, I think once you get out of that one, once you get out of that one year routine, that others make me start coming to full. So yeah, I, same thing. I'll have to stay with the one year. Mary. Stay with the one year because then there's a better chance of keeping control of the performance. Okay. Alyssa. Oh, everybody else wants one year. I'll go with one year as well. Um, Same I here. Someone make a motion to extend the um, order of conditions for one year. So moved. I need a second. I have the motion. I need a second. 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 Thank you. All in favor, Kwame. Yes. Michael. Yes. Mary. Yes. Alyssa. Yes. Sandy. Yes. One year extension. All right. Well, thank you. See you in a year. I'll be happy to come back and visit you again. Okay. okay. Thank, thank, you. thank you very you. much. Bye bye. We have a certifications of compliance. David, 27 Agawam Lakeshore Drive. Yeah, so I did review this site. This was for a septic upgrade. Um, there are some features there that were not consistent with the order of condition. So um, I've got to contact the engineer and the owner. So I'd like to hold off on doing anything with this at this time. Okay. Um, other businesses, Neil Sullivan, a plan change. This has been, uh, we have a notice 
of intent and order of conditions for this property and the homeowner wants to make some change. So Dave will speak to it. And I thought I saw the homeowner on the line. So Dave, if you start, please. Sure, I'm just gonna bring up the uh, plan here. So we have this to look at. Um, so this um, is a project at 7 Groveland Street in Onset. And this is a project where <clears throat> there was an existing garage, which was um, permitted to be reconstructed in the same general location as you see uh, on this plan right here. So this is the way the project was approved in this particular footprint. And this is the 30 foot you know, activity zone line right here. Um, I, Apparently the stairway to get from the top floor down was within the building as it was pr proposed here. And the owner is now seeking the permission to do a plan change to put a stairway on the outside of the building sort of along this line right here. Um, so that essentially is I think what the proposed discussion is about. And I'll let the owner speak more to that. Um, make sure I'm understanding that correctly. Neil, your turn. Uh, yes, yeah. this is Neil Sullivan uh, or Cornelius Sullivan as I'm on your plan. Can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. Thank you both for uh, taking the time and for the committee. Um, David's absolutely right. I've gone through for about a little over a year, year and a half now getting the permitting done. And uh, I originally had envisioned putting the stairs inside the garage to go up to the second floor, which has been permitted. Um, the way this is designed, if you see those stairs in the upper right hand corner, that goes down to a detached driveway, driveway down below. I'd simply like to put four or five stairs just inside that going up to the second floor for a couple of reasons. It's going to give me a little more space in the garage, which is very narrow at the moment because I needed to work on the existing footprint. And secondly, because walking from the main house over to the garage, I'll only need to walk up five or six stairs to get to my office as opposed to have to walking down those seven or eight existing stairs going into the garage and then walking up. I think that the, the, the important thing to note here is that the, the small number of stairs that I'm looking to put in, what I'm really looking for is the ability to put two, what is effectively four by four posts that's going to hold up these five or six stairs. It's on land that has already been landscaped. There's grass right there, and there's some mulch bark that's there. This isn't a, this isn't sand. This isn't an, this isn't your typical resource zone down by the beach. This is actually part of my yard, which is landscaped, which has you know a sprinkler system and which has grass, and it's always been there. So I, I after looking at the project and going through everything, I had reached out to Dave and others and just said, would you mind if I put a couple of stairs in there for uh, the sake of making it easier for me to go up and down. And as far as being in the resource area, um, I look at it, you know, not traditional, the traditional resource area in that it is the furthest away from the beach. And it's also on the existing landscaping of the house as it stands today. So the request is whether or not we ask for an amendment to the order of conditions or we approve what he's recommending. Is that, Dave, did I understand that correctly? Yes. Questions on commission, Kwame? Um, none, thank you. Michael? No, oh, I'm good, thank you. Mary? Go along with the plan. Okay, Alyssa. No questions. Sandy, I would prefer to see an amendment order of conditions so that everybody's on the same plan as to what's being done, but that's, that's me. What about the rest of you? I agree. Second. Yes. What, may I ask what that entails? Because what I'm really talking about here is two 
two posts that are four foot by four foot. Understand. Dave, do you want to answer his question? What is an amended order of conditions? Um, basically what that entails is uh, to amend the order of conditions to show a plan change um, compared to what was previously approved does require basically a public hearing before the commission. So you would have to have a plan that shows a specific change and the commission would have to hold a hearing like they've done for other projects tonight to formally adopt uh, an amended plan for the project. So that's what that means. Now, I just want so I'm sorry, go ahead. I just want us all to be on the same plan as it, exactly what you mean by two post and the landing for the stairs, et cetera. So, but I'm sorry, um, Neil, ask your question. Uh, I didn't know if this was such a minor change that it could be addressed this evening so that I could move forward with the project. I've been going through this now for well in excess of a year. It's, I'm really saying that there are six or seven stairs that are going up. There are two four by four posts that are holding up the stairs right next to the side of the building. And it comes down to a landing, which is already in existence on a landscape piece of property already. And I was hoping that we could just have similar minds this evening without having to delay any further and uh, going through any further costs with engineering and the like uh, for, you know, I, I, I think I've done everything that has been asked of me up to this point. I, I agree that I did not put it on the original plan, um, you know, but it will be much more beneficial, um, I think, aesthetically, as well as, uh, you know, for, for my purpose getting up and down. I was hopeful that the board would uh, make some accommodation for me this evening. And that's what I'm asking for. You said there's an existing landing there now? Yeah, there's a, there's a landing right there where those stairs are, as you see on the plan. I think I see stairs. I don't, am I missing a landing on the, on the plan on the left side? Well, the stairs are going to go up right next to that set of stairs that are right there. So there's, uh, you know, I'll put a, I'll put up the, there's going to be, there is a landing on the top of that stair right now. Yes. So I'm are really you are, you talk, are you talking about right here or are you talking about up in this corner? I'm sorry, Dave. I can't see what you're pointing at from here. I'm, I'm oh. looking at the stairs that are, that are drawn on in the upper right-hand corner of the, the existing garage that goes down into my driveway. Yeah, okay, so you're talking about right here, yep. So I'm saying I want to simply put two posts in there so I can have a set of stairs that go up to a door. That, it, so people understand, this garage is built into the side of a hill, so it's already four feet down. The stairs that I'm putting up on the side are on the top of that hill, so I need you know five or six stairs or whatever it may be to get up there as opposed to putting 15 or 20 in, in the garage itself. And I walk out of my main residence, I walk right over to my office. All right, Commission, I need to know, what do you want to do? Do we want to have a, a full amended order of conditions or? David, haven't put the... Sorry? What does David think on this? How important is another full set? Well, I mean, in, from, from my viewpoint, from my position, I have to say it's a, ch a change that the commission should formally have in front of them to approve, but that's up to the commission's judgment call. Not not per se mine. It is a minor change. So, um, but I, you know, from from my position, I have to make that statement because that's what's Good typical problem. practice. Yeah, that sort of tells you what we need. Oh, uh, and and I'm asking for some, uh, hopefully, uh, some some type of a relief here amongst the folks on the board. To, to be able to move forward uh, on what I believe is, I mean, these posts are literally four by four posts. There are two of them that are, that are going into the ground on, on, a landscaped, uh, on a landscaped piece of land on my home. 
Okay, Dave, I'm going to ask a question. If somewhere down the line, Neil asked for a certification of compliance and these stairs are not on, excuse me, Alan, thank you. If these stairs are not on the plan, will there be an issue getting a certification of compliance that the job was not built to what was um, conditioned? Well, no, because again, the commission can grant the certificate of compliance if they think the change is minor. Um, so, you know, that's an option too. You could, you could say you want to see the change reflected in the as-built plan when he gets the certificate of compliance. You know, that's Therefore, you'd be bringing up that the as-built plan differed from what was approved. Right, but with, with that, the commission could still grant the certificate if you felt it was a minor deviation. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm happy to give you that. Our, our builder will, will design that as soon as we get off this call. Okay. I'd be comfortable with that. As long as we got the plans as built plans um, approved. I would be comfortable with that also. All right. Kwame? Yes. Michael? Yes. So what, we're, what I'm hearing is that the commission is willing to acknowledge that this is a small change. We don't need a formal amendment to an order of conditions and it would be represented on as a as-bill plan when the owner comes back for certification of compliance? I did. That's it? I think yes. that's it. All right, I'm going to ask for a vote on that motion to accept this as a minor change and not require a full amendment to an order of condition. I have, I'm just make. I'm asking someone to make the motion. I'm I have a motion. Second. I need a second. Second. I'm sorry. I'm getting a uh, kibitzing on my side here. So second. I'll approve that. Is uh, Kwame? Yes. Michael. Yes. Mary? Yes. Alyssa? Yes. Sandy? Yes. Okay, Neil. A minor change. I, uh, a couple of things. First of all, thank you very much. I appreciate it for everyone. And we will move forward and get that to Dave. Uh, two other comments since I've been on the line for the past hour and a half. Oh, thank me God. Too. <laughs> thank God somebody's looking to clean up down in Wareham, whether it's a dock or something. I think it's yeah. great that you're cleaning up down by the waterfront. And Sandy, as uh, we had discussed previously, and I know Dave, I'm more than willing to assist whatever you would like to do and gain towns folks to do the cleanup of the Onset Bluff. You tell me when and where and I'll get your bodies. Okay, thank you. Thank all you. Right. Thank you all. Appreciate your, night, your time. Okay. Thank you. Next, 3036 30, Cranberry Highway Emergency Certification. Mr. Bichette, um, you're up. Yes, we had a situation where there was um, a fuel release at one of the um, mobile home parks on Cranberry Highway. Um, it's sort of across from WaterWiz, across the highway from there, and it backs up onto Dick's Pond. Um, one of the trailers had an, uh, an above ground uh, home heating oil tank that leaked, and that was um, discovered and uh, emergency response showed up to address it. So they wanted to immediately do some cleanup work, which normally would require permitting from us. But in this case, they wanted to get an, an emergency approval to move forward with that, which, which I gave them to do um, because it didn't make sense to hold back on cleaning up a fuel spill. Um, so I was in touch with Sandy. Um, she is, was aware of that. We met down at the site. And so typically, um, once the commission meets again, the commission should vote to formally grant the emergency certificate of um, the emergency certification. So that's why this is on the agenda to get the, com the commission to formally vote to issue that. We don't know how much oil, heating oil was uh, released into the pond but it was onshore breezes, so it sort of kept it in the little alcove 
and it didn't spread all over Dick's pond or the or the ice in the pond would have turned pink from the heating oil. So we were very fortunate to have it contained as quickly as we did. Um, and just to so follow up on that, the applicant um, or the, their consultant will follow up with a notice of intent filing with us for this work. And the work that's gonna be involved is they are gonna to have to excavate some soil out of there um, that's contaminated that, that will also mean they have to alter some vegetation there um, but that's just what's required in order to clean it up. So um, it's, it's sort of a small footprint or envelope of worked area to um, be addressed here, but um, that's, that's the nature of where we're at with it. Any questions on the board, Kwame? None. Michael? None. Mary? No questions. Alyssa? No. Sandy? I think I've asked my questions. Okay, I'll take a motion to um, approve the emergency certification. I move. I have that motion. Second. I had a second. All in favor, Kwame? Yes. Michael? Mary? Yes. Alyssa? Sandy? Yes, so it will be one more piece of paper for us to sign on tomorrow, and they'll come before us with a notice of intent. Okay, next one. Solar bylaw proposed change. Um, Dave, do you want to talk about that or since it's not going on the warrant, table it? Well, I do want to talk about it just briefly. Um, this is something that was discussed um, to try to put in place um, some measures to prevent these large scale clear cuts for solar projects. Um, so it was a discussion that was had by um, a working group and the thought was to try to put an article on the town, the Springtown meeting to make some changes to our zoning bylaws, which would prevent these huge large scale clear cuts for solar projects. Um, so that's something that obviously has to be um, voted on to be put on the warrant by the selectmen. I don't believe they supported that. Um, they did not, it was not placed on the warrant. Um, so, so that was not put on the warrant. So I think um, there may be an effort from what, I'm, what I think may occur to have an article put on through a citizen's petition maybe um, on the special. So we'll see if that happens or not. That's not for me to decide, but I just wanted to bring people up to speed in terms of where the situation is at. David, is there, is there a group of people who are getting this petition going? Maybe. It is under discussion. We don't, we, this group of people have not formally made the decision to work toward a citizen's petition. We need, a, if it happens for special spring, we need a hundred signatures and that's work in progress. It hasn't been decided yet. And for clarity, I'm part of that little citizens group along with Nancy McKay from Wareham um, Land Trust and uh, two members of the planning board being uh, what? Mr. King and Mr. Swenson. But we haven't gotten together to say whether or not we are going to pursue that. Well, if you have to give a vote, Sandy, I'd like you to try to pursue it. Well, thank you. Thank you. So well, we, will, we will see what happens. I believe the warrant for special spring closes at uh, maybe the end of March. So we have a couple of weeks to work on it. Um, next meeting date, of course, is the 17th. And Mr. Pichette, when will, will the documents be ready for signature tomorrow? Um, I will have that ready by nine o'clock. Um, I'll be in the office till from nine to 10, middle after 10, then I have some site visits I have to go out to, and then I'll be back in the office later in the afternoon. So depending on when people can come by, I will be there between nine and 10. And um, I did receive, I asked a question and I got an answer. It looks like we may have somebody that will be available to do a year's worth of our minutes. Right. I mean, you haven't noticed there's been no minutes to approve for 
long, long, long time. So since Kelly left, so we're hoping to have somebody come up to catch us up with minutes. Good job. I think that was it. I've got no other comments. Anybody else? Nope. If not, close the meeting. I have motion to close the meeting. Thank you. <laughs> all in favor, wave your hand. <laughs> there, all I see is waves. Thank yeah. you, everybody. Thanks, Steve. Oh.